Aloha everyone and welcome to another video by me, Kaomer, and this video is a C60 question and, and answer. Uh, I got a, uh, uh, I've had a couple of questions lately about sonication, uh, and Mr. Buckski here just posted this morning uh, on the C60 Good Vibe chat room, you know, uh, five questions for me, and it's a lot easier to just uh, record the answer uh, than type it all out, and, uh, and then I realized, you know, I might as well just make this uh, public because you probably, other people probably have the same questions. Uh, so let me go ahead and just jump right in, and I'm just going to answer the questions uh, uh, in this video. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Buskey, for your compliments. I do appreciate it. The first question now is, number one, is the ultrasonic DIY method by using the recommended device not only the fastest, but also the generally better way to DIY C60 that you can personally recommend ultrasonic better than stirring for 14 days? And the answer is, is I, can't, I can't recommend ultrasonic or I don't recommend ultrasonic is the best fast way. Uh, you know, when you look at making C60, there's a fast way, and then there's the benchmark standard Bati way, which is the two week stir, blah, 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 right? So uh, that's the standard, that's the benchmark stir two weeks, but there are ways to make it faster, um, and ultrasonic is one way, and the other way, which I've just been tinkering with in the last couple of months, is using heat. And so now that I've kind of done it both ways, uh, uh, meaning the fast way, uh, two ways you can do it faster, I would recommend honestly that it's faster, I mean, sorry, <laughs> there's faster and, and slower, right? So let's stay in the fast lane. In the fast lane, there are two ways to do it, and I would recommend that the better fast way is using heat, and only for the purpose, because it's just a lot less hassle. Uh, when you use a sonicator, you've got a lot of things you gotta worry about and it's jarring your teeth the whole time you're standing next to it. But, you know, with that aside, um, you know, it, it does get hot and it can get hotter than you want. So I'm always having to put ice in there, you know. Um, and then the, the, the length of time uh, is an, another issue. Um, the size of the machine, I mean, I've got a three liter sonicator and, and the biggest flask I can put in there is 500 milliliters. And I make full liters at a time, which means I gotta run it twice so it's a hassle, you know, and you gotta put water in it, and you gotta, you know, clean it out when you're done. And I've discovered that just simply using heat is a lot easier, and it gives you the exact same results. You can literally mix your C60 in 24 hours, and let it sit for 10 days, and boom, off you go. So it does really cut down that 14 day stir time, cuts it down to one day. So when you're in the fast lane, I would recommend heat over ultrasonic so then your other question here is, is the 20 kilohertz operation mode better than 40? And if yes, uh, you know, can you briefly explain why? Uh, actually, it is yes per uh, Martin at Red Lion. And Martin, uh, there, I mean, in my research of the different producers of C60, I know of at least, I think the last time was like three. Uh, there's a lot of people that make C60. Almost everybody stirs but there's just a handful of folks that use sonicators. And, and Martin at uh, Red Lion is one of those individuals, and he basically said in all of his experimentations, trials and errors, that he discovered the lower the uh, frequency of the ultrasonic machine you're using, uh, the better saturation that he was able to obtain through his experimentation. So that's why the 20 uh, kilohertz is, is really, actually it's not 20 kilo, is it 20 kilo? I'm sorry, I forget whether it's 20 kilo or 20 hertz. Um, uh, it, it could be the lower. But the whole idea, though, is you want to go with the lower number. And then he later, after, uh, you know, he constantly is changing uh, his formula. Uh, but three years ago, it was, uh, or two years ago, it was 20. Uh, and because at the time, the, the, the main machine everybody could afford to get, where were the smaller machines, um, were 20 and 40. Most of them are all 40. I mean, literally all of them are 40. But if you go digging around, you can find a 20 and a 40. Uh, and so then he said to, uh, to me, you know, go with the 20. And then after that, about a year later, he said, you know what? If you're going to produce commercially, you can get a bigger one and then go with 28. He said 28 was good to go for commercial. But he did mention to me that the sweet spot was 21 uh, hertz, okay? So, but there is, I could never find an ultrasonic machine that you could dial in at 21 hertz. So, uh, I went with the 2040 and then I did 20 hertz for the longest time uh, until I switched to a different way of making C60 and that's the reason why. Uh, question number two is, uh, 
Do you have any experience about adding a few drops of DMSO to the C60 for enhanced results? And if yes, can DMSO be added to all three applications, uh, application options being topic, oral, and inhaling? Um, so my experience with DMSO and C60 has 100% topical. Um, I, I've never messed with uh, using DMSO uh, orally or uh, inhaling. Um, and, and the thing about uh, DMSO, uh, when I used to have pulverized C60, I used to kind of mess around with it until I realized you don't want to put C60 on your skin and then go out in the sun. And, you know, so I, I just really don't use C60 raw on my skin anymore. Uh, I kind of like evolved into using the C60 topical products. Uh, in the early days, there just wasn't any C60 topical products. Uh, but now I, I did a video, I don't know, a few months ago. Uh, about you know like I did a review and there's a whole bunch of C60 topical products right now shout out to Layla Labs their products are awesome another shout out to C60 Labs uh, Dave over there produces this coconut C60 thing that it's cream it's awesome uh, that actually helps I use that every day for my eczema uh, and so it, and it really helps uh, but you know so at the time there just wasn't so I would put a drop of pulverized C60 on the back of my hand and then when it started to just dry just a little bit you know the alcohol would evaporate off I would put a drop of DMSO on top of that um, and then it would literally you know just carry it straight through into the bloodstream um, and it worked really well so topically it does work it does and it you know it'll do that with anything I mean it'll just carry it straight through um, but you know DMSO is is a very dangerous thing to play around with so uh, personally I would never put it orally or I would never mess with my lungs with that and uh, it, it's just it's a very powerful substance um, and so I, I'm just not gonna go there I you know but that's my experience with it and uh, I personally would not do oral or inhale uh, now number three if you ultrasonic the C60 do you do it for 100 minutes in the dark and in temperature mode okay so when I used to use an ultrasonic all the time uh, I would do 20 Hertz um, I would only go, and this is the uh, recommendation again by Martin from Red Lion. Uh, I would go, I think his recommendation, it's in one of my videos. I think it's in my uh, mix video. I did a video all about uh, mixing and I did one all about uh, uh, filtration. But in the mix video, um, he gave me his secret formula. <laughs> uh, and it was like 2.67 seconds or something like that. Uh, it was something really sore minutes I'm sorry but it was a very very short period of time it's in that video I'm sorry I don't have it around the top of my head um, but it's only for a few minutes it is not a hundred minutes a hundred minutes and this was the thing he said too when he did all of his experimentation he said that you know you can just as easily build up those lipofullerenes and creating those liposomes uh, but then if you go too long with a sonicator uh, you you have two problems heat and then the continual vibration will then break up the liposomes and you go back to C60 uh, and you destroy your fatty acid lipids that you, it can no longer do liposomes. So so he said, you know, um, he was, I think it was like two minutes something, but I, you know, I, I can look it up just if, if you can't find it, let me know. It's in that video uh, where I basically say this is Martin's secret formula and this is the, the actual time. He actually gave us a very specific time that says 20 hertz these exact number of minutes and seconds and you're done don't mess it don't mess with it anymore so it's way less than 100 minutes all right and then the temperature uh is something that i kind of kind of tinkered with and uh, i discovered that anything over 105 fahrenheit it just the oil just didn't taste that good uh you know you kind of burned it uh, anything under 105 it would come out okay so i always kept uh my sonicator uh you know cooler than i always try to keep it around 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Now, number four uh, question is, does it still take one full day to filter the C60 with a pump? And how long does it take to just let the C60 run through? Uh, it all completely depends on, on what filter you're using, um, not, not the filter size. Yes, you want to use 0.22 uh, microns. That is the standard. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's the one everybody uses. So, uh, you know, go with that. Uh, but now the actual filter itself, if it's if it's a four inch filter, it's gonna be way different uh, length of time than a two inch filter, right? Depending on the filtration device you're using. Uh, and so that makes a big difference. And then it depends on the pump. So to give you an example, if you use, let me just jump into Amazon, pull this up earlier. Uh, yeah, these guys right here, you see these guys? If you use one of them, it's a four inch filter and you attach that to a, um, a regular pump, like a, a filter aid or a Swift, um, like these little tiny pumps they look like aquarium pumps oh i guess they don't sell that one anymore okay 
It's been a while. I, I I got so many of these things. I don't think about it. Whoop, I'm gonna swip pump pump. Okay, how's that? Um, wow. Okay, I'm gonna have to dig around for it. But it's a little tiny pump, and they used to sell one called a filter eight. I don't know why it's not here. Filter eight. Uh, eight vacuum. Sorry, filter eight vacuum pump. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there's the filter eight. This got a little puppy right here. There's another one called a Swift, and it's black, and that's that's the only difference. Now you use one of these with one of those plastic filters that I, I showed you earlier, um, and it will take uh, overnight, and you're done. Okay, literally like not not more than 12 hours uh, to filter it out. Okay, uh, and that 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 but that's on top of the fact that you did let it sit for 10 days. If you don't let it sit for 10 days, you're gonna have a hard time filtering because the filter would get clogged really quickly. But that's how long you have with, uh, if you're using just this tiny little pump and a plastic filter. Now, if you're using a glass filter with a two inch uh, piece of filter paper in it, you know, a two inch nozzle, um, then you're gonna wanna use one of these bigger pumps like this one. I have I have one of these, I have a Causey Vacu uh, 3.5, almost like, almost the exact same one, this one. Uh, and I have one of these guys and this puppy, well, here's the Swift right there, this black guy right there. Uh, but then um, I have one of these blue ones uh, it's a Kazi vac 3.5 cubic feet per minute, um, you know, vacuum pump. And, and when I attach that to a glass, you never attach it to a plastic one. It'll break it. But if you attach it to glass with the right tubing, um, and you put in, uh, you could run a, you can run a thousand milliliters in less than 40 minutes. I mean, that thing will just suck it right through. You'll have to replace the paper three times, but very quick, very quick. So that answers that question there. Um, last thing was, uh, okay, and then one more question was, um, do you recommend using C60 frequency in the power capsule, the 9010 power capsule, or, ha or even having it permanently in the 9010 cube like a healing stone? Uh, yeah, that, you know, I, honestly, I think that's good stuff. I mean, I have, um, you know, I have, I have multiple cubes uh, and in my home, and so it's kind of like a it's a broadcast station basically it's got this giant toroidal field of energy around it and whatever you put inside that thing uh is going to broadcast it within the field so if i'm living you know if i live in the field then yeah why not i mean so uh, i would definitely say put all sorts of uh, wonderful things that are good for you in that just remember though that you're living with it and you're constantly exposed to it um and something that um you always want to be really careful about is like you know too much is not good sometimes so you know so pick and choose what you want um, like for me, I don't really have uh, supplements in mind uh, in terms of inside a cube. Instead, I have the frequency of silver. That's what I'm doing this month, and, and I really like it. Uh, it's really helping with my sleep. So uh, that's that. Okay, so other than that, um, now the other thing I do want to ask you, or I want, I'd, I'd like to see if you could consider this, is you're saying that, hey, you want to make C60 for your family, uh, and so you're obviously opting to go the faster route. But I just want to point out that uh, here's the thing about using a sonicator. They're like 150 bucks, right? Um, or if you're using like heat, uh, this is the one, uh, you know, Santa was good to me last Christmas. Uh, and Santa and I got this one. And so it was $250. Um, and this is what I use for, uh, you know, using heat to stir C60 or to, you know, to mix it uh, overnight. Uh, and, it, and it works, like I said. So, you know, it, it is pricey. And I want to point out that, you know, if you time your production correctly and you're always and you can make big batches so if you get one of these and this is like the consensus of the group is that this is like literally the best one and uh c60 labs dave over there recommended this one and and people who have bought it are like yeah absolutely this thing works great if you get a maelstrom it's only 140 it goes on sale around black friday drops down to like 99 bucks every year it does that right so if you just wait till November, which is like what six weeks away, um, and then you could probably just pick this puppy up for like a hundred bucks. And this guy can stir up to two liters easy. So if you're making C60 for your family and you want to do it in bulk, um, you can do two liters at a time on a Maelstrom. Way cheaper. It's not the flash. You know, it's the slow lane, right? It's a two-week slow lane, but it's a lot less expensive. You can do bigger batches. And if you just time everything right, and, and depending on the consumption level of your family and how fast you're making C60, you know, this might work out for you. And one of the things about the Maelstrom, and this is what Dave was saying at C60, was he's got 50 of these things. He's been running them 24-7 for over two years and has never had one break. So, I mean, we're talking about a really good stir at a decent price, wait till Black Friday, or, you know, 
and uh, and you know and you can just be doing two liters at a time and uh, two liters is, goes a long way uh, you know uh, depending on how many people you're, you're doing so you know you don't necessarily need to be in the fast lane you can easily be uh, in the slow lane if you know and just get a really good stir that can do more than uh, one liter at a time uh, do and that and rem, and, and this is as a reminder uh, you always want to use these uh, straight walled beakers they produce the best vortex keep it covered keep it dark to your other question um, and then you want to use uh, your stir bars now when you're looking at stir bars because the maelstrom I don't believe comes with one I know that the 4e uh, doesn't come with one uh, so when you're looking at stir bars just as an FYI I've tried all these different stir bars I went and bought like the every single size <laughs> and shape and and you know what honestly nothing works better than just a regular old uh, you know stir bar with no little nub on it and just get a two inch one and it works perfectly uh, with a one liter straight walled beaker and you're good to go all right uh, that's it uh, thanks for uh, your questions uh, and uh, I hope this helped other people and aloha have a great day guys bye